in a transverse wave as you can see the particles vibrate perpendicular to the direction of wave motion whereas in longitudinal waves the vibration of particles is parallel to the direction of wave pro propagation we can see this so this is one more important property which helps us understand why primary waves don't uh, travel through both solids liquids and gases whereas the secondary waves or transverse waves travel only through only through solids but not through liquids or gases this is mainly because the primary the, the primary waves are longitudinal waves being compressional in nature they don't depend on shear strength of the material when it comes to their motion their velocity only depends on shear strength whereas transverse waves their motion completely depends on shear strength of the rock or material and when these waves travel from a solid to liquid medium that is so when they travel from solid to liquid medium at, at a certain stage if this is liquid and the below one is solid then these waves suddenly get lost because of the absence of shear strength in water so the the vibrations being perpendicular this is how the earth would shake depending on whether it is crust or trough so the vibrations will be horizontal when it comes to transverse waves this is horizontal way of vibrations so when they enter a liquid medium the liquid medium medium not having enough shear strength there is no vibrations in perpendicular direction to the wave propagation and and hence transverse waves or secondary waves get lost in liquids whereas in longitudinal waves which are compressional it is not dependent on shear strength when it comes to its wave motion and the particles vibrate perpendicular to the horizon and liquids have the ability to vibrate per perpendicularly to the horizon you can see in this direction and hence they don't get lost in when they enter a liquid medium but the intensity decreases with decrease in velocity so now let us look at the most important concept which is called as shadow zones and first we look at the shadow zone of s waves these shadow zones are the more important ones which explain the earth's interior let us see how imagine that earth is a homogeneous medium all throughout then it would not have any layers inside and if an earthquake happened somewhere at this point then the earthquake waves would reach all the other places but in reality what have, what 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 happens to the behavior of earthquakes with respect to s waves or secondary waves which are transverse in nature so when earthquake happens there is about 40% of the region on the other side of the earth where these waves are absent this is called as shadow zone for secondary waves and we have seen the important property of secondary waves which says that these waves cannot cannot travel through liquids so when is this possible that is when this kind of shadow zone will be established we will see that this is mainly because of liquid core which is present at the center and based on the extent of this shadow zone and also the deflection of the waves one can estimate what is the size of this liquid medium in the center uh, that is present at the core and we see that the waves doesn't doesn't travel in straight lines this is mainly due to reflection and refraction reflection is where light gets or uh, mean the wave gets reflected in refraction the wave changes or bends towards or away from the normal a perpendicular is called normal so when a ray of light moves from denser medium to uh, sorry rarer medium to denser medium then it would bend towards the normal and when it moves from denser to rarer medium then it would move away from the normal this is a property of waves so based on these properties one can and the behavior of these secondary waves one can estimate what is the density of different layers as well as based on varying speeds of these waves one can also say what kind of solid substances are present in the earth's interior so if the speed is greater then the solids are very tough or have greater shear strength and if the speed is lower then solids would have lesser shear strength so based on the direction as well as this shadow zone one can tell about what's exactly inside the earth's interior we can see that there is a liquid 
core which is called it is actually a liquid outer core we'll see about solid inner core later and now let us look at p waves uh, for the p waves shadow zone for primary waves or longitudinal waves this primary waves have a different nature of shadow zone they are not as the shadow zone is not extensive like in second sorry primary sorry secondary waves are transverse waves so for primary waves shadow zone is very much confined to a less smaller extent this is mainly due to the behavior of primary waves we have seen that the change in direction as well as their speed decreases when they travel from one medium to another we have seen how they move towards how they reflect or refract towards the normal away from the normal so based on that we see that when a wave travels from outer liquid core towards the interior it is traveling from a less denser medium to a greater denser medium we can observe this from the way refraction took place and when it leaves the exact opposite happens and when we study these waves coming in on the other side of the earth we'll observe that certain region in certain regions we don't see these waves or primary uh, primary waves or longitudinal waves this is mainly due to the refraction of waves at certain layers so from this nature or behavior of waves one can tell what is present within this earth's core so this is what we have assumed without an internal core that is inner core but when we take inner core the behavior would be much different for example we can see how a wave which is transmitted in this direction is traveling in a different manner and you can see this wave which has totally changed its direction to the other side so this change in directions is mainly due to the refraction at different layers we have seen how refraction happens when it travels from a rarer medium to a denser medium that is let us consider it is traveling from air to water then it is it is traveling from a rarer to denser medium then the wave would be deflecting towards the normal and when it travels from water to air that is from denser to rarer medium then it would be deflecting away from the normal so the same principles are applied when deflections happen within the earth's interior and based on the starting point of the wave and the ending point of the wave one can understand what kind of deflections happen inside the earth and based on that one can establish what kind of layers are present deep inside the earth's interior so the, from the observation of p waves it is mainly understood that there is a solid in a core surrounded by a liquid outer core so by studying both p waves and s waves finally scientists could establish what kind of layers are present in the inside the earth's crust or, or in within the earth's interior and based on all these observations like deflection of waves speed of waves at different points and also shadow zones of both primary and secondary waves finally scientists came to the conclusion that there is an outer solid core and then below which there is a mantle followed by outer liquid core and then a solid inner core so some questions related <coughs> to the topic why does sound waves travel faster in a denser medium whereas light travels slower this is because light being transverse in nature it doesn't depend on shear strength whereas sound being longitudinal in nature it becomes dependent on shear strength the velocities depend on shear strength whereas the directions are exact opposite in longitudinal waves the direction or movement of waves is not influenced by shear strength whereas in transverse waves the shear strength definitely changes the direction of wave for example when we see a wave travels like a sound wave travels from air to glass it undergoes refraction this is because of change in density but when a sound wave enters it doesn't change in direction this is because it is independent of shear strength coming to velocities the longitudinal waves greatly depend on or the sound waves greatly depend on densities when they travel from air through glass the velocity increases because they are traveling from rarer to denser medium we have seen that as density increases the velocity increases whereas for a transverse wave or a light wave when they travel from rarer to denser medium their velocity decreases so you get you need not get confused this is not important for exam this can be some basic knowledge for prelims if you don't understand this you can just leave it then why s waves cannot travel through liquids i've talked about this how shear strength influences 
the travel nature of these waves and then based on all these observations scientists came to the conclusion about the concentric layers as we have seen crust mantle outer core and inner core we study physical properties of these different layers so the crust is about 100 to 50 kilometers thick in the continental region whereas in the oceanic region its thickness com completely decreases as you can see it has smaller thickness and below the crust there is sudden change in medium and this change in medium is called discontinuity its name is mohorovic discontinuity followed by asthenosphere actually this is some area mohorovic discontinuity and asthenosphere is a medium that is the part of upper mantle and asthenosphere is important in study of plate tectonics asthenosphere is a medium which is semi solid or ductile medium that is it is in the form of a molten iron we can see molten iron is not so rigid but still cannot flow easily this is the nature of asthenosphere asthenosphere being ductile helps the movement of crustal plates so this is what explains tectonic plate theory so this is the major driving force of the convection cycles which are transferred from asthenosphere to the crust so asthenosphere is important in plate tectonics so what are convectional cycles the core being very hot and the upper surfaces being very cold there is movement of this molten material from core to the upper layers and when, once this hot thing gets to the top it gets cold and falls back to the core we have seen this in the previous video how convection cycles work so this movement of molten matter gives for force for the plates to move so the convection cycles are the major driving force beyond plate tectonics and asthenosphere asthenosphere is the one that facilitates plate tectonic movement and then mantle is a semi solid or semi molten state followed by inner core which is liquid this is mantle this is asthenosphere and then the outer core which is liquid and the inner core being solid so if you study the nature of rocks usually outer core has basic rocks or sedimentary rocks this is mainly because of deposition of various kind of uh, matter or uh, solid particles due to fluvial action and other action and a layer just below this would have acidic rocks or igneous rocks these are mainly of volcan uh, due to volcanic origin uh, origin and they are acidic in nature because of high amount of silica so the basic rocks are the ones where silica is low whereas acidic rocks are the ones where silica is high and these rocks are very tough because of great amount of silica content and at the bottom layers of the crust we have seen about upper layer and middle layer of the crust and at the bottom layer the rocks are usually ultra basic rocks because of less silica content and then we see mantle where there are significant amount of silicates followed by outer core where mostly iron and other heavy elements dominate and at the inner core it is mainly composed of iron and nickel which are very heavy so we'll study layer by layer so crust is the one that extends from mohorovic discontinuity you can say this is mohorovic discontinuity the small layer between asthenosphere and the low, lower parts of the crust and thickness of crust varies as we have seen it varies from 50 to 30 kilometers at this uh, near the continental regions whereas its thickness is only about 5 to 30 kilometers at the oceanic regions and the crust makes up makes up up to 0.5 to 1 percent of total earth's volume and then its density varies from 2 to 3 times that of water so the overall density of earth is about 5.4 the outer layers are less denser whereas the inner layers are very dense we'll see that we have seen that surfaces are made of gra granitic rocks or basic rocks they are sedimentary in nature and then below the igneous uh, the upper surface there are rocks which are igneous in nature they are acidic due to greater amount of silica content and below that layer we see what we call as ultra basic rocks which are highly basic in nature due to less content of silica and the crust is the continental crust is made up of silicates of aluminium which are lighter that is why this layer is called cl s i a l and the layers the oceanic crust is made up of silicates of magnesium and this la layer is called as sima 
that is the crust which is part of oceans is called as sima and the crust which is part of continents is called as cl and cl being light of floats above the continents uh, sorry oceans and sima being heavier which gets deeper into the crust the next important layer is mantle it makes up up to 16% of the earth's total volume it it extends from about 100 to 2900 km below the earth's surface so it is in molten semi molten state in certain cases it is made up of solid rock and magma so magma is in semi molten state so it is a combination of hard and molten material and then its density at the outer layers is about 3.3 .3 and at the inner layers that is near the outer core it's about 5.7 so we have seen that earth's average density is 5.4 times that of water outer layer is partly schematic like just like ocean surface the outer layer is partly schematic it is made up of silicates of magnesium and inner layer is schematic with ultra basic rocks so even inner layer is schematic but it has ultra basic rocks that is lesser content of silicates and then asthenosphere is the most important thing that is a part of mant mantle it, it extends up to 500 km below the surface or below the earth's crustal layer and we have seen how asthenosphere is important in plate tectonics and then most important or the important ones which is responsible for most of the forces on the earth's surface is core which is very hot due to radioactive <coughs> radioactive decay as well as other source of heat which are present after the formation of Earth's uh, Earth as a whole in the solar system, so it extends from 2,900 kilometers to up to 6,400 kilometers. So we'll reach the center at this point. It makes up up to 83 percent of the Earth's volume, both inner and outer core combined. So Gutenberg discontinuity is a layer which is made up of mixed heavy metals and silicate that separates the core from outer layers. So this is where we see the Gutenberg discontinuity between mantle and the core. So this, these continuities are the ones where there is sharp change in the nature of medium. Usually there is one discontinuity near crust, between crust and mantle. It is called as Mohorovic discontinuity. Likewise, there is Gutenberg discontinuity between mantle and inner core. So this inter, inner core is, may, is called knife because of presence of iron and nickel. Iron and nickel make up major parts of this core. They are heavy metals which sink to the bottom. So both inner core and outer core are rich with iron and nickel. So outer core is liquid and inner core is solid. And the density varies from 10 to 13. So the average density is influenced mainly by the inner layers which are very dense, making the average density of earth about 5.4. We have seen that outer crust is about 2 to 3 times denser than water. Then mantle is about 3 to 5 times then when we come to core it, is, it varies from 10 to 13 so the core is very dense and till now we have seen all the important layers then we have studied earthquake waves so these are important topics for both prelims and for mains the most important topic would be the behavior of seismic waves and the shadow zone and one can even ask about different physical properties or uh, and chemical properties of the different layers and for some prelims questions, we'll see what is the composition of Earth's crust. So we need not remember all these minerals or metals or elements. So oxygen is a non-metal. There are few metals like aluminum, iron, etc. So Earth's crust is mainly composed of oxygen. It constitutes up to 46.6%, followed by silicon and then aluminum. So we need to remember the top three or top four elements. So this is purely prelims based question which could be where there can be ascending order, descending order of these elements. So arrange the following elements in ascending order by their availability in the earth's crust can be a question. So we just need to remember this table where oxygen being oxygen is the major constant of earth's crust followed by silicon and then aluminum. Likewise there is one more thing which is composition of earth as a whole. When we come to composition of earth as a whole, iron is the major element followed by oxygen and then silicon so there is a clue we can get from this between oxygen and iron usually silicates are present in, uh, present in abundance on the earth's surface silicates are a combination of silicon and oxygen so obviously oxygen would be the main element on the earth's surface followed by silicon and then when we come to earth as a whole 
usually the core is denser and it is mainly filled with iron and nickel so obviously iron would fall to be the most heavily available element with within the earth as a whole and then we can just remember this order of silicon sorry oxygen and then silicon this order doesn't change but significant change is magnesium and aluminum usually earth's crust has significant amount of aluminum whereas earth as a whole has magnesium in significant amounts so it's simply about remembering this table which is important for prelims so questions from previous papers in the structure of planet earth below the mantle the core is mainly made up of which of the following so we are talking about the structure below the mantle so it says aluminum chromium iron and silicon we have studied about this we have seen that the core inner and outer core are predominantly made up of iron and nickel so the obvious answer would be iron and there are various other questions which are easy so i didn't include so this is the end of earth interior thanks for watching please do subscribe to my youtube channel and also follow my blog where i'll be uploading notes for various important uh, civil service uh, civil services related concepts so thanks for watching and keep on revising the concept that's important